Hello everybody, I'm Mr. Schmidt or Brad Schmidt. This is the first of what I hope will be several workshops I can present to the Aldi Art community over the years. This one's gonna be a kind of a preview on oil pastels. I'm not gonna go into everything because we're gonna do a workshop in February. If you're interested in that, please make sure you sign up and RSVP to Miss Newman because we're trying to get some materials for everybody to play with. Um, but today, whether or not you have the materials, I think this will be really helpful in seeing kind of the potential of oil pastels. If you'd like to work along with me, please do. If you don't have oil pastels though, I don't want you to click out of here and go somewhere else because we're going to see a lot of cool stuff. I've just recently finished watching all the TAEA videos that kind of talked about oil pastels. And that made me feel a lot more confident because most of those videos, they kind of only did color swatches. And we're gonna do a lot more than that and kind of explore some of the possibilities in the material. Now, oil pastels, I have two boxes here that are pretty nice. They're a material that is fairly recent. They were created, uh, I wanna say about 70 years ago for Pablo Picasso. He sent a friend to the Sennelier shop across the street from the Louvre and said, I want something kind of like pastel but that I can put on any support. And this is what they came up with. So the Sennelier ones are kind of the real deal. In the classroom, I like Cray Pass a lot. I wanna show you some examples of what I think are a bad oil pastel. Because when I first came into the classroom, there were a ton in my classroom. And I kind of thought like, what are these doing here? Because I kind of think of it, like I said, as that crafty material. And when it's applied poorly, I definitely think it comes off that way too. Like here's an early oil pastel I did um, that I think looks horrible. There's not a lot going on here. You know, there's not a lot of change in value. It looks pretty flat to me. I just think this is boring. The main reason I've kept it is one of the exciting things about oil pastel. Oil pastel is what we would call a non-sicative material. Sicative means that it dries out. So like linseed oil or walnut oil, those are the oils that are in oil paint. Those are sicative oils, which do eventually dry. A non-sicative material is basically always wet, which means that we can kind of treat this whole thing like an a la prima painting, uh, wet on wet painting, which for me, since I'm a painter, makes so much more sense and is so much more fun to work with than kind of thinking of as that drawing tool. Although you can also do that. I'm gonna kind of walk you through some of these bad examples and then take some steps up to show you what I think is possible. So here's another one that I don't think is great, but I think is better. It's not entirely fixed yet. I kind of want to drop this horizon line a little bit and I've started to do that. Um, but this is a lot more, this grabs me much more than this previous piece. And you can see this is on black paper. There's kind of some high contrast. Uh, I've got some nice variety of tones going on here. And you can see also a little bit of like sgraffito, which really adds to that effect when kids are walking up from the side, especially. I've got a lot of my students doing oil pastel right now because it's such a fast material and getting to, to explore that sort of sgraffito type of thing has really made a lot of them excited, more so than I would expect. Here's another piece, which I think is kind of exciting. It reminds me a little bit of like a Greco portrait because we got this sort of drift thing. And I want you to see how painterly some of these marks are. Now, some of the stuff out here, I think still looks bad. And this still might be kind of that realm of what you're thinking oil pastel does. So let's look at some that I think are actually, you know, pretty good. Like this. You know, this is a pumpkin from Direct Observation. I just had my classroom sitting on a stool with some fabric. And there's all sorts of stuff that I love in this piece, like all this variation in the fabric, the places where the black peeks through, where it doesn't these nice gradations into blue and purple and everything kind of going on with this pumpkin. Like look at that thick impasto application. You know, really this is a piece that comes out. Uh, it has some three dimensionality, some form to it. And it always catches like students eyes when I have it at school. Here's another one that was really kind of my breakthrough with oil pastels. And I use oil pastels a lot just personally. So even if this is not something you want to take into your classroom, 
it is a material I think you should get and experiment with because it's so, so fast. And I'm a big art history nerd. Anytime I kind of see an image I find really provocative or in the style I want to be more like, I like to copy them. And, you know, not one-to-one -one copies. I'm not like printing on a grid or anything, but I'll sit down and I'll draw it. And oil pastels have helped me do that much more, helped me keep my eye in practice. Uh, you know, I love kind of all of the stuff happening here. Again, like look at those really expressive mark making to make that nose stand out, to suggest the eyes over here in the beard and down here getting a lot looser. Uh, this reminds me a little bit of like a comic book style. And what I was looking at for this piece is a, a Manet self-portrait. So I have changed it quite a bit, and I think this hat's still a little bit too small. But uh, it's a really nice piece, and this one actually has some finishing on it. So you can see that little bit of gloss. One great thing about oil pastels is you don't actually need fixative. Here's one that doesn't have any fixative that, again, I really like. This is a woman who's blind in one eye. Um, this is early Picasso that inspired me here. And again, I kind of love everything happening in this piece. And you can see very rough application here. I'm not even really smoothing at this point. Um, and a lot of people, I think when they see oil pastels, they imagine that very kind of hazy, overly smooth piece. This rough application can be great too, and it's how I like to use it lots of times. Although I will show you some other stuff, like I said. Uh, I also plan a lot for like my paintings using some oil pastel. Let's see, I should have some examples in here. Like this is a Francis Bacon, uh, the middle panel of a triptych that I love. And again, lots of really nice detail. This is not nearly as thick. And this is on about 80 pound paper. Um, this is what I like to sketch on. And you can see there's not really any bleed through on like this page. So we don't really have any uh, oil coming through. You can see a little bit of smudging, but you can't see like it's smudged onto this page, this little landscape study, but it hasn't really damaged any of this, which is another example of why we don't really need fixative. And let me jump back a little bit more. Here's another piece of planning I did for a kind of a favist, um, landscape, which I did with some of the IB students. And you can see lots of this really rough, just kind of getting my color placement. You know, I really like this material. I like how fast it is. And I can actually just take it out with me and work from direct observation, kind of in person. Especially like this, I would much rather carry around with me than a box of colored pencils. I can just pop my pencil in here and kind of have a huge variety of colors that lay down really fast. Now you can see, it can go on any kind of support. This paper, which I think is pretty nice, does get a little bit of that oil bleed through. Now that was from those Sennelier oil pastels, which like I said, are really kind of primo. And you can only see it kind of with certain colors and really thick applications. So I would try to stick to a thicker paper. Although I do think the cheaper oil pastels have less of that kind of bleed through the paper. Um, Bristol is about the thinnest I've found success with, and that's what I'm using with a lot of my students, but you really can put this on anything. So like I've done, I've got a lot of students right now kind of working on this type of material, like the back of this book, kind of these thin sheets of stock, like a, almost like a cardboard, but more of a poster board, I suppose. So now I'm going to pause this video and when I come back, we're going to make a new piece.